The Templars and the Gnostic Secrets of the Cathars Narrated by Zoran the Dragon Ah, welcome back, dear traveller. Today, I shall share with you one of the most enigmatic and spiritually profound connections that the Templars made during their journeys, their relationship with the Cathars, a group of Gnostic Christians who held ancient wisdom deep within the heart of southern France. These peaceful yet mysterious people, whose beliefs were so different from the mainstream church, held truths that would profoundly impact the Templars' own quest for spiritual understanding. Let me take you back to the 12th and 13th centuries, a time of great tension between the Catholic Church and this unassuming group of Gnostic believers who had come to be known as the Cathars, or the Pure Ones. The Cathars lived in the mountainous region of Languedoc, in present-day southern France, where their communities were known for their simplicity, piety, and disdain for the material world. They had developed their own form of Christianity one that stood in stark contrast to the orthodox teachings of the church. Instead of focusing on the material and outward displays of faith, the Cathars sought to transcend the physical world, which they believed was tainted by evil forces. Now, as the Templars ventured into this region, they were struck by the Cathars' purity of spirit and their unwavering commitment to living a life aligned with higher truths. The Cathars, unlike other Christian sects, believed that the material world was the creation of an evil force a corrupt realm that trapped the soul in a cycle of suffering and illusion. For the Cathars, the true God existed beyond this physical plane, in a world of light and spirit. They viewed the soul as a spark of divine light, imprisoned in the flesh, and saw salvation as a process of liberation from this material prison. The Templars, whose own vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience mirrored some of the Cathars' spiritual discipline, found much in common with these Gnostic Christians. But it was their esoteric understanding of the divine that truly captured the Templars' imagination. The Cathars spoke of two worlds, the world of spirit and the world of matter. The world of matter, they said, was governed by the Demiurge, a lesser god who had created the material universe to trap souls in a cycle of suffering. The true god, however, was a being of pure light and love, existing far beyond the reach of this corrupt realm. To the Templars, this dualistic worldview was both unsettling and enlightening. They had long been taught that the material world was the creation of a benevolent god, but the Cathars showed them a different perspective, a perspective in which the true battle was not against external enemies, but against the illusions and temptations of the physical world. The Templars began to see their quest for spiritual purity just as a battle against sign, but as an internal struggle to free their souls from the chains of materiality. One of the most intriguing teachings the Templars encountered among the Cathars was their belief in reincarnation. Unlike the Orthodox Christian view, which held that each person had one life followed by judgment, the Cathars believed that souls were reincarnated again and again until they were able to achieve spiritual liberation. To them, life was a series of lessons, each incarnation providing an opportunity to purify the soul and draw closer to the divine. This idea resonated with the Templars, who were already familiar with the mystical teachings of other traditions, such as the Sufis and Kabbalists, that spoke of the soul's journey toward enlightenment. The Cathars also had their own version of the Holy Grail legender concept that the Templars were already well acquainted with. To the Cathars, the Grail was not a physical chalice, but rather a symbol of the divine spark within every soul. They believed that the Grail represented the hidden knowledge that could lead one to spiritual freedom, the key to breaking free from the illusions of the material world. This idea of the Grail as an inner, mystical journey deeply influenced the Templars, who had long been searching for a hidden wisdom and spiritual truths. The Cathars' most sacred ritual was the Consolamentum, a spiritual baptism or laying on of hands that they believed could cleanse the soul and prepare it for ascension to the divine realm of light. The Templars, who were fascinated by rituals and sacred rites, were drawn to the Consolamentum as a powerful symbol of spiritual transformation. Unlike the traditional Christian sacraments, which were focused on physical rituals, the Consolamentum was entirely spiritual, 
a direct transmission of divine grace that transcended the material world. This rite reminded the Templars of the ancient mystical traditions they had encountered in the East, where spiritual initiation was often seen as a key to unlocking higher states of consciousness. But the Cathars' teachings were dangerous in the eyes of the Catholic Church. Their rejection of the material world and their belief in an evil demiurge were seen as heretical, and the Church could not tolerate such a radical departure from Orthodox teachings. In 1209, the Church launched the Albigensian Crusade against the Cathars, a brutal campaign that sought to eradicate their beliefs and their way of life. Many Cathar communities were destroyed, and thousands of Cathars were burned at the stake. The Templars, caught between their loyalty to the Church and their respect for the Cathars' spiritual wisdom, found themselves in a difficult position. While they were bound to support the Crusades, many Templars had come to secretly admire the Cathars and their teachings. Some say that the Templars sought to protect Cathar communities, sheltering them from persecution, while others believed that they incorporated some of the Cathars' mystical beliefs into their own secret practices. Ah, but there is more to this tale, dear traveler. You see, the Cathars were also believed to possess ancient knowledge about the Holy Grail, knowledge that the Templars were desperate to uncover. According to legend, the last of the Cathar Perfecti, their most spiritually advanced members escaped the final siege of the Cathar stronghold at Montsegur, carrying with them a secret treasure. Some say this treasure was the Grail itself, while others believe it was a collection of ancient texts or relics containing the hidden wisdom of the Cathars. The Templars, who had long been searching for the Grail, saw in the Cathar treasure just material wealth, but spiritual enlightenment. They believed that the Cathars had uncovered a great secret, a key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe. Some even say that the Templars themselves became the protectors of this secret knowledge, hiding it away in the vaults of their temples, where it would remain safe from the reach of the Church. Though the Cathars were eventually wiped out, their influence on the Templars remained. The Cathars had shown the Templars that the true battle was not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against the forces of ignorance and illusion that kept the soul trapped in the material world. The Templars, who had once been warriors of the sword, now became warriors of the spirit, seeking to free themselves from the chains of matter and rise toward the divine light. And so, the Cathar legacy lived on within the Templar order, hidden in secret rites and symbols, whispered about in the corridors of their temples. Though the Church tried to erase the memory of the Cathars, their teachings endured, passed down through the Templars and other mystical groups who sought to preserve the ancient wisdom of the Gnostics. As we draw this chapter to a close, remember, dear traveler, that the path to enlightenment is not always easy, and those who seek truth often face great opposition. But the Cathars and the Templars remind us that the soul's journey is one of liberation, and that by seeking the divine within, we can break free from the illusions of the material world and ascend toward the light.